Um, well, I, you know, first and foremost, I think it's we feel very fortunate to be continuing the winners bracket. I mean, that's where you want to be clearly, and and to be, in my opinion, a very very good baseball team. They remind us uh, a lot of our our own team and big physical guys that swing the bat and pitch the heck out of it. Uh, and you know, the way that thing started, it was one of those where you're like, uh oh, uh, good thing we had the answer. Um, but you know, we're not sitting here really anticipating you know, who we're going to face tomorrow or, or really worried about that. We were just thanking our lucky stars because clearly this team was probably playing some of the best. Austin P was probably playing some of the best baseball in the country coming into this game, and we knew that uh, we were going to have our hands full. And, and I thought once Joey got uh, settled in after the rough first inning, he was pretty effective and and keeping a pretty darn good hitting team in check. Um, so. Um, we're happy with the win. I think a you know, long day for everybody, you guys included. Um, I think we're ready to go get some rest and you know, sit back and watch two uh, two teams go at it tomorrow to see who we play. Questions for the student athletes? Joey, I guess uh, you didn't. I don't think you allowed a hit in your last four innings. What changed? What was the difference between the first couple innings and and then those last four? What changed for you? Uh, well, I think uh, in the beginning, in the first inning. I kind of psyched myself out a little bit, thinking, I don't know, they're, I was kind of, I, uh, just, they're a good hitting team, so maybe I wasn't as aggressive as I should have been. And once I kind of got my off speed working, getting that curveball over for a first pitch strike, it kind of helped me settle down. And uh, yeah, once I was getting in front or ahead of batters and count, um, I could get ahead with off speed pitches. And, yeah. Craig Dragish, Indy Sports Legends. Joey, uh, you went with the change up primarily later in the innings. How much of that was, was your decision and communication with the coaches or whatever, and how much was, was just uh, kind of the overall pitch going? Yeah, um, in between innings, I talked to Coach Neal, and I told him that, well, first of all, the my first pitch curveball was working for me. I told him I wanted to do that a little bit more. And then uh, towards the end of the game, they kind of just clicked, and that uh, it started working um, probably towards the fourth inning, and then we kind of stuck with that throughout the rest of the game. Dustin DePierre, Bloomington Herald Times. Sam, just the, the home run you hit off the uh, off the scoreboard, basically just, you know, what were you thinking that about it? Did that just work out for you there? Uh, well, we started a lot of guys out, a lot of right-handers with the uh, first pitch fastball, and uh, I was just going up there looking to hit something hard and make something happen, and uh, wanted to get the inning going, and uh, hit the ball hard, and just say a little over the time, so it worked out good for us. Mike McVicker, Rivals, uh, Scott. Chad Clark said last night about getting the Kings out, you know, how much less of a factor tonight were nerves and, and the stage? You, you know, it was, a, it was real big to come out and last night to come back and get that win, and then everyone came out today real relaxed. And as you can see, we came out and jumped on right away, and it was just real good to get the nerves gone. I guess kind of a similar question, but, but Coach said he, he sort of felt, I guess, a relief of pressure after the end of last night's game, particularly the way it happened. And, and the two, three, four, five spots today, you guys drove in all your runs, and I think you, you combined for something like 10 hits. I mean, just kind of what changed for you guys from Kyle to Sam to Scott down to Michael uh, in the lineup tonight versus last night? Um, I mean, we knew we had to come out and be more aggressive uh, in tag fastballs, uh, tag, more importantly in tag fastball strikes. And uh, we just got to wait for our pitches, and I think we did a great job of that today. And uh, more importantly, we didn't swing at the pitcher's pitches, so we didn't get ourselves out. <laughs> we uh, hit the ball hard today and worked out worked out well. Uh, Alex McCarthy, Inside Indiana. You guys walked, I think, 12 times, and Scott and Sam, you guys walked, I think, six between the two of you. Was, that, was there kind of a concerted effort tonight to try and work the count, or were there just kind of not very many good pitches to swing at sometimes? Well, Sam said, you know, we were going up there, coming to attack one pitch and not get ourselves out and swing at bad pitches and the pitcher's pitch. So we came out and we we're, you know, a lot more selective with our bats. And as you can see, if you come up with patience, it ends up paying off a lot. Uh, Joey, I know with the, with the strikeouts tonight, you moved into the top five uh, all time at IU. I mean, does that, what, what does that mean to you to be up there, you know, at this school and playing baseball for forever? Um, <clears throat> I actually didn't know that, um, but yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's cool, but it's not something I'm, I'm keeping track of or anything. I just go out there and pitch and try and pitch as best, the best I can, and uh, I guess that kind of thing happens. So. 
guess Scott, Sam, was there a point, I guess, early on where you just kind of felt, felt like you had that guy more or less that you guys were locked in on and, you know, you got a chance to really put some runs on the board? I think uh, one of the biggest hits was, you know, Schwarber came up and had that two-out two, two out RBI and just, you know, nuked the ball up the middle, got two runs to come in, and then right after that, Sam comes and blasts that home run over the fence. And I think right after that, I knew, you know, we came up and we're like, any pitcher we face, we're going to attack him. Anything else from the players? Yeah. Uh, Pat Hickey, Baseball America. Uh, Joey, after the after the offense put up the five spot in the second, I guess just how big of a, a relief was it for you? Yeah, it was a, it was a huge relief. Um, it, I mean, with our the offense we have, I, I know that uh, with with a if we're down whether we're down two or up by two, I know that. We're going to keep that lead as long as I do my job. And today it was definitely, I mean, after the first inning, I think it was 3 nothing. Then we came back and uh, what did we put a two spot? Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, anyways, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a huge relief having the, the lineup that we do. And uh, coming at, from a pitcher, it's, it's definitely a lot easier and a lot less stressful when we have the lead and we have the lead pretty much the whole game. Identify ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Zach Osterman, Inside Indiana. Uh, Skip, you know, not trying to start any fires or anything, but just in terms of Joey's longevity in this game, how important was that that five run second inning after he kind of struggled there in the first in terms of how long how long of a leash you were going to give him? Um, it was important. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you because uh, you know we were we were concerned with the, the swings they put on that, and then plus the success that uh, Florida had had with their lineup with the right-handers. So we were going to be watching that pretty closely. Um, but the five spot was good because it gave him a little bit of a cushion to to attack. And, you know, when someone throws a five spot on you, the tendency offensively is to try to get it all back, you know, in one swing and try to do much. So when you try to do that off a lefty, you end up letting the lefty settle in. So it worked out uh, pretty much in our favor. Andy Graham, Bloomington Herald Times, you know, talk about a five spot. They didn't, they didn't really had one person in case he caught that ball at the wall. Um, but do you think, to expand upon a topic that's already been raised with the players, that it really was a case, as you mentioned last night, that home run did more than win a game for you. It relaxed your guys, and even after giving up three in the first, you know, they were ready to rebound pretty fast. For sure, and, and, and honestly, when I saw that ball go off the bat, that last one, I was already processing in my mind. Oh my God, we're down five. Uh, I was I was shocked that he caught it, but yeah, I, as I said, I mean, I just felt, and you could like they got to three, the guys came back in the dugout. It wasn't panic time. It was like, hey, let's just let's just keep going here, and they came out and put some pretty good swings on them. So um, I think getting getting that back and then some certainly even even help that attitude even more. But uh, I, I was convinced last night that it was great just to get that monkey off our back so we can just get back to playing baseball. And as I said last night, we could go out and lose you know, the next game or whatever, but I still feel the mindset would be that our guys would be a heck of a lot more relaxed than they were last night. Dustin, if you're echoing with the Herald Times, I guess just expand on that, how much of a difference did you see in you know, at bat approaches, basically the way the guys were, you know, what they were swinging at that sort of thing. A lot, you know, but it, you know, and I'll say it again. I don't, I don't want to take away from what uh, the Valparaiso pitcher was doing. I thought he, you know, we were anxious, but let's not forget he was making some quality pitches and keeping the ball down. And I think Sam alluded to it that he had us swinging a lot of non-strikes last night, and we felt, you know, that relaxed approach. But uh, Delgado is a power pitcher. And when you have a power pitcher, the tendency sometimes if they're trying to overthrow is to be up. And I felt if he leaves some balls up in the zone, we looked at his numbers coming in. I mean, ERA, number of home runs, the wind was blowing out uh, today. I wasn't too concerned about the three spot in the bottom. I said, you know, we're probably.
probably going to score three runs today, just given given our lineup. But uh, Craig Dragon, you Sports Legends coach. Uh, the decision to take Joey out after the sixth inning was that performance based, or that anything to do with it? Where you were at in the game with the big lead? Yeah, I, uh, not performance because I thought he was really starting to settle in with his changeup and off speed at that time. He was at 106 pitches. I knew he was like 90, I think, starting that inning. Um, so, you know, with the big lead, truth be told, if, if we're locked in a one-run game there, we'd probably go running back out there again. But uh, I thought he was just hitting his stride when we took him out. It was nice to get some of the other guys in and still keep that bullpen, uh, bullpen fresh uh, for tomorrow, and certainly if we have to extend uh, beyond that. Luke Thompson with Lee Fountiful. How much do you think that the way you guys were hitting the ball in their approach had to do with these 12 walks in the pitches? Um, you mean, so if I'm here, so just us hitting with them then being tentative in the strike zone with an increased walk? Well, I mean, again, I think Gary's probably a better answer uh, for his staff, but, you know, looking at some of the kids that were coming in, um, they didn't have, it didn't look like they were some of their regular guys. That's, so, um, and we have some of that too on our staff. And usually, when a guy's not a regular guy for you, it's probably because he's walking people. Um, but you know, and, and I'll just say this: in watching, and I'm not saying this is necessarily them, but sometimes hitter, pitchers do see they see those flags blowing straight out, and they start nibbling. You start nibbling, you fall behind. You fall behind, you start walking people. So I think there's probably a combination, a little bit, of all that going on today. You alluded to this a little bit, but I mean, after having to use Ed Frost so much last night, and obviously I think Halstead had to throw 15 pitches, I mean, how important was it tonight for Joey to settle in and then for you to get a couple of good innings from Christian so you could get Ed Frost tonight off and you could, the bullpen's been a strength all year? Well, it was huge. Um, the big lead afforded us because, you know, my only concern at that time is don't walk, you know, the guys that come in, don't walk anybody. You know, let's make, if someone's going to beat us, they're going to have to knock it around a little bit. Christian came in and tried to prove me right. You know, they want to get uh, three singles in a row. Um, but, you know, it was, it, I like when I get some guys in there, too, that haven't you know, pitched a lot of regional. They can, you know, said senior walker staff was a wonderful opportunity for him to come in. So, for me, it served two purposes. It gave two great kids who work as hard as everybody on the staff an opportunity to pitch. But it also gave two great kids a chance to pitch in a regional in front of their hometown crowd. So, and save her bullpen too. Just a quick follow-up. Do you, do you know who's going to start tomorrow? Uh, we haven't talked about that yet. Um, uh, I think we'll uh, we'll probably wait and see uh, who, who we who we face uh, as far as matchups because um, we've got everybody available. Um, but I'll get with Coach Neal and, and we'll talk about that and kind of see what we're going to do.